You're watching the 10,000 League and today's video is on Udam Singh, Indian revolutionary, Marxist, Republican and martyr. Let's go. Getting straight to who he was, you need to know a little bit about the background of Indian history in the form of the Amritsar Massacre. Now the Amritsar Massacre was to Indian Republican history as Bloody Sunday was to Irish Republican history. There is this event in which British, old, British um, commanded soldiers gun down many innocent people, the mood and the atmosphere changes, and then people switch to more revolutionary ways, in which um, India's case was revolution. In 1919, there was an event known as the Amritsar Massacre, in which British soldiers in the town of Amritsar, they weren't ethnically British, but they were ordered by the British army, gunned down hundreds of innocent, unarmed Indian civilians. Now, uh, the justification was that this was a Republican meeting, but many of the people in the square in which the shooting took place were unarmed civilians. Not only this, but in the very same town, there was a practice called the Crawling Order, in which Indians were forced to, all ethnic Indians, British um, were omitted from this, all uh, Indians were forced to get down on their hands, knees and faces and crawl and drag themselves through the dirt if they wanted to pass certain roads in the town. After the Amritsar massacre, the British cut off uh, all kinds of provisions such as water and travel for the people living in the town so it's harder to get out. Udam Singh was just a teenager when he witnessed this massacre. Udam Singh would later travel to the other side of the world, almost two decades later, and assassinate one of the men who approved of this horrific massacre. To give you an idea of just how awful the Amritsar massacre was, many of the people who were shot dead were shot dead running and trying desperately to open the gates of the doors of Jallianwala Bagh, Jallianwala Garden, where the massacre took place in the town of Amritsar. Many people flung themselves into a nearby well, which is now known as Martyr's Well, and dozens of people were chucked into the well, they were injured so they couldn't swim up to the water, and they drowned. People were forbidden from rescuing the people in Martyr's Well because the British soldiers had put a curfew around the town and ordered everybody to stay indoors. Therefore, the people who did survive in this well were left overnight to drown. And because so many people fell into this well to try to escape British gunfire, many people drowned because they were crushed underneath the bodies and corpses of people who had fallen on top of them, and their heads were forced underneath the water by the weight of all the corpses on top of them. Now, Udam Singh spent the next two decades of his life travelling around the world. He went to America, he went to Switzerland, he travelled all around Asia and Europe. He was a member of a revolutionary party known as the Gadar Party, which was a rebel movement to try to topple the British Raj. And they had a lot of sympathy abroad with Indians living in Canada and Britain. However, that is the topic of another video. Maybe my next video. Subscribe and find out. Udam Singh travelled in 1940 to Caxton Hall in England. There, the Lieutenant Governor of Punjab, Michael O'Dwyer, was giving a speech at a Royal Society meeting. At this meeting, Udam Singh drew out his pistol and shot him, assassinating Michael O'Dwyer, the man who had approved of the Amritsar Massacre. Remember, Michael O'Dwyer did not commit the Amritsar Massacre, but he gave it the thumbs up once he heard that it happened, and he said that it was justified. For those of you who are observant in my video, you might have noticed these pictures in the background representing different parts of Udam Singh's life. Here is him assassinating O'Dwyer. Here is him travelling through Britain. You see Big Ben in the background. These two pictures show the Amritsar Massacre happening. And this one shows Udam Singh joining in the Gadar Party. Now, Udam Singh, like many Indian Republicans and other anti-colonial freedom fighters, had a very strong Marxist influence. And the Gadar Party, he was a member of too, also had a very strong Marxist influence, like a lot of revolutionaries at this time. Remember that this was just after the Bolshevik Revolution, the October Revolution, and the Soviet Union was still very new. And many people who wanted to start revolutions in their own countries looked up to the Soviet Union and took example from it. Now, when Udam Singh was captured, he did not run away. Once he had assassinated O'Dwyer, he gave himself up to the police. He gave this speech when the judge asked him about his motives, and I'll read to you a quote by Udam Singh here, quoted in Inkwalab Zindabad, India's Liberation Struggle. I do not care about sentence of death. It means nothing at all. I do not worry about it at all. I am dying for a purpose. We are suffering from the British Empire. 
I am proud to die, to free my native land, and I hope that when I am gone, in my place, will come thousands of my countrymen to drive you dirty dogs out, to free my country. You will be cleansed out of India, and your British imperialism will be smashed. Machine guns on the streets of India now mow down thousands of poor women and children, wherever your so-called flag of democracy and Christianity flies. Your conduct, your conduct, I am speaking about the British government. I have nothing against the British, the English people, sorry, at all. I have more English friends living in England than I had in India. I have great sympathy with the workers of England. I'm against the imperialist government. So when he says, I hate their government, but I love British people, he's saying, I have more in common with the working class people of Britain than we do with the upper classes of Britain and India. Now, after the assassination, Gandhi himself gave a status, a um, speech to reporters about what he thought about the events at Caxton Hall, which saw Michael O'Dwyer assassinated by Udham Singh. This is a quote by Gandhi on the assassination. The news of the death of Sir Michael O'Dwyer and the injuries of Lord Zetland, Lord Lamington, and Sir Louis Dane has caused me deep pain. I regard this as an act of insanity. What Gandhi is saying is very clear. The British mowed down with their rifles and machine guns hundreds of innocent men, women and children, unarmed innocent men, women and children, many who didn't even have anything to do with rebellion against the British government. Massacred them in cold blood, and that's, oh well, that's just how the British act. But when an Indian revolutionary takes up the gun and kills one guilty murderer, one man who was responsible, Gandhi sees this as an act of madness. There's a saying, I can't remember who this came from, I think it was Mao Zedong, but it goes, the emperor can raise entire villages, but the people are forbidden from lighting a single candle. Now the book Inquilab Zindabad, which I've been reading on Indian republicanism, goes on even further, and it says, Gandhi, he, Gandhi, went on to express the hope that it would not affect Indian politics. He further expressed his condolence with the O'Dwyer family and congratulated Lord Zetland upon his escape. Gandhi, whose pacifist soul was shaken to the core by the assassination of this imperialist butcher, was not to express such sympathy for the family and friends of Udam Singh after the latter's execution in Pentonville Prison. Which brings us to the last part of the story, Udam Singh was trialled and he was executed in Pentonville Prison. He spent time in Brixham Prison until his execution. So why haven't British people heard of Udam Singh? Because the history of Indian Republicanism has been... Uh, it's all been washed out and scrubbed to look as... like it was all a pacifist struggle, headed by Gandhi and Indian National Congress himself, where nothing could be further than the truth. The Indian Republican fight for the Republic was gritty, it was bloody, there were Marxists and Communists and Socialists crawling all over it. It was not just this fancy prancy pacifist struggle where Gandhi, you know, him and his followers got beat up, the British realised the error of their ways, and then they just left the country peacefully. Britain only left India because it was in their interest to do so, because hunkering themselves down in India was costing far more than they could get out of India, especially after all the debt and damage that the British Empire had suffered after World War II. The British did not leave India because they were filled with regret and they saw the error of their ways. The way that the Indian Republican struggle has been treated is so similar to the way that the black civil rights movement in the United States has been treated. And that's it. And they tried to paint the black civil rights movement, like the Indian Republican movement, as this pacifist struggle, which was all peaceful lovey-dovey and the oppressor saw the error of their ways and everybody went home and it was nice. But they scrub out all the nitty-gritty, bloody revolutionaries of the black civil rights movement, such as Paul Robeson, uh, Robert Williams, Huey P. Newton, uh, the Black Panther Party, who, they weren't a black nationalist group, they were so heavily influenced by Mao Zedong and the Eastern Bloc, the Soviet Union too. But you don't hear about that in American classrooms. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll be putting out many more videos on Indian Republicanism, trying to get rid of this idea that it was a pacifist, it was a clean pacifist struggle headed by Gandhi himself, because that is wrong. Thank you, it's been a 10,000 league, goodbye.